Hello everyone, thanks for joining this session. My name is Yi Liu from Intel Corporation. Uh, today I'm going to share the passive management in KVM together with my colleague Jacob Pan. This is the agenda for the session. I will do a passive recap first and then review the passive usage in shared virtual addressing and the Intel scalable IOV. After that, Jacob would uh, introduce more details on the PACID management uh, from the software side. PACID stands for Process Address Space ID. With the introduction of it, DMA remapping happens at the request ID and uh, PACID granularity. To achieve such isolation granularity, platform vendors should also support uh, IMU PACID table. It is a per device table by hardware design and uh, its storage in virtualization environment uh, differs across vendors. Like uh, Intel virtualization technology for directed I.O. is maintained by host and uh, IMU nested translation. But for ARM system memory management unit uh, version 3 and uh, AMD IMU is maintained by guest and uh, nested translation. This difference results in different ways to set, set up IMU nested translation for guest. One is to bind the guest passage to host one by one. Another is to bind the whole guest passage table to host. Okay, let's see the passage usage in shared virtual addressing. The diagram in the left shows the steps to set up SV usage in native. Application will issue bind the process request, which goes into device driver, and then will goes into IM driver. IM driver will uh, allocate a passive and uh, bind the passive with the CPU page table of the current process by creating a passive entry in the passive table. Then passive is programmed to hardware device. After that, device is able to access the process virtual address space with the passive. Uh, when it comes to virtualization, guest uh, follows the same steps to set up SVA. However, hypervisor needs to trap guest's specific operations in order to set up next translation for SVA. Uh, for example, Intel virtualization technology for directed I.O requires to trap guest uh, passive allocation and the passive cache flush to set up IOMU nested translation for each passive in host site. For vendors which allows guest uh, maintain get passive table uh, and uh, nested translation, it needs, it needs to uh, trap the guest passive table initialization to bind uh, the whole guest passive table to host. After setting up guest SVA, device would be able to access the virtual address space of the guest application with the PASID. PASID is also the foundation of uh, Intel Scalable IOV. Uh, each assignable device interface will be associated with the host PASID. This association happens when its parent device is attached to a domain in a auxiliary manner. IMU driver will allocate default passive for auxiliary domains. With the default passive, a dynable device interface can access to the virtual, uh, virtual machine's guest physical address space. Uh, as of now, passive is no longer just taking process address space. It can also take a guest physical address space. So it's actually uh, IO address space ID instead of just a process address space ID. This is also the base of passive management uh, in software. Since SVA and the SIV are both based on passive, can they coexist? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, since they are a orthogonal IO technologies, for example, we can set up guest SVA on assigned ADIs. Guest just needs to follow the normal steps for SVA setup. However, there is still a difference on the passive program between physical functions and ADIs. For physical functions, passes from guest are programmed to hardware directly, while for ADIs, 
pass the program should be mediated by host, which means pass it from guest should be converted to host pass it first, and then program to hardware. My colleague Hao uh, just talked about Intel's ink command for this guest pass it to host pass it translation. Uh, when it comes to the example in the diagram, if VM0 programs guest pass it to device A and uh, to device uh, to VDL0 for device A, it will get uh, guest pass it, while for VDL0, it will get a uh, host pass it. Uh, considering the host support for net translation and uh, the I.O. Page, uh, page request from device, Host will have both guest pass it and host pass it simultaneously. This may have potential conflict, so we need to get a proper pass it management in host side. This would be introduced by Jacob. Uh, hi, Jacob. I think you can take over it now. Thanks. Hi. Thanks, E, for the introduction. Again, my name is Jacob Penn. Uh, I will continue to talk about IO ACID and the passive management. Uh, this is a generic library we introduced uh, since kernel uh, version 505. But ever since, we have been continuously improving it to meet uh, guest SVM IOVA use cases. So, in the next few slides, I uh, will uh, touch upon four aspects of the passive management. The first one is guest to host passive mapping. And then uh, because uh, IOA SID is a system-wide resource, uh, we'll talk about the partitioning and uh, namespaces we support. And also, uh, IOA SID is just not a single simple number. It's, uh, uh, it has multiple users with hardware contacts associated with it. So we'll talk about how to synchronize the IOA SID states uh, when things change. Uh, in the end, uh, we'll walk through a typical life cycle of IOA SID in the normal uh, flow. Well, we probably don't have time to talk about exception cases. Now we move on to a gas and host passive mapping. So far, there are two main approaches to support gas passive. The first one being shadow the gas passive table. This is used by VTD scalable mode. The second is to bind the gas passive table. Uh, this is used by uh, ARMS as MMU version 3. So now looking from uh, IOACID point of view, what are requirements? Uh, because IOACID is a generic infrastructure. So if you look at a shadowed approach, it requires a guest host passive translation because guest host passive may not be equal to the host passive. It also requires every single guest passive has a host passive backing. Because uh, on scalable mode, we support so-called shared work queue, meaning a, share, a work queue, single work queue can be assigned to multiple VMs. Therefore, in, a, in order to identify two DMA streams with, with passes, it, the passive value must be unique. That's why the passive value, the passive has to be uh, system-wide. So there's also a little bit caveat when it comes down to PF assignment. When you assign a PF to the guest, the guest can directly program uh, pass it onto the onto the physical device, which is not mediated. This is fine when you don't have any other devices uh, to allocate passes from the host. But when it comes to a mix with assignable device interfaces, which is mediated device and it allocates a passive from the host, so they may create a conflict. Therefore, some sort of enforcement must be done to prevent this conflict. And if you look at a second approach, bind, basket, bind as passive table, it's much simpler because the guest simply owns the passive table and the host simply don't care. So in terms of requirements for IOACID, number one, it's a superset. So IOACID is a limited system-wide resource. In the PCIe spec, PASIT is 20 bits. 
So we must partition them into groups in order to support multiple users. In this example, we have three IOC groups. We call it IOC sets. Set zero is used for host usage, such as native SVM or native IOVA. And I always say the set one and two were given to the two VMs we have here. In terms of namespaces, we do not support multiple namespaces. Each native environment has only one single namespace for the IOS. So in this example, the gas pass, uh, the VM one could have IOS number one, and VM two can also have IOS uh, number one. But the backing IOS are different. The host is 101 and 102 respectively. They must be unique to identify the DMA streams that match different page tables. So in terms of sizes, we illustrate here the VM2 has a smaller quota uh, for the IOAC set because the system administrator may give uh, less resource to VM2 or the VM1. That could be depending on how many assigned devices they have or other use cases. So IOAC is not a simple number. On a real system, it has many users, and each user may have hardware context associated with it. In this particular example, we'll use Intel's VTD scalable IOV platform. On this platform, we could have five potential users of the IOAC. So for CPU, it has a passive MSR. This is used for in -queue command. They must be propagated or set up before in -queue command can be used. The VFIO is a pure software construct. However, hypervisor must use VFIO to communicate with the kernel for allocation, free bind unbind of the passive. IOMMU, of course, stores the passive table and the context. It performs the actual bind on bind of the guest uh, page table and the passive. The KPM maintains a passive translation table that performs the guest host passive, passive translation. Device driver, such as media device, they program the actual passive onto the device in order to generate DMA request with passive stream. So in order to synchronize uh, all these users when passive state changes, such as being unbind, we must get some sort of a notification. Uh, here we proposed a IOAC notification chain for each, uh, each VM or each IOAC set. Uh, for example, when the passive is unbind, KVM will receive a bind notification event, and then it will tear down its entry in the passive translation table. There is also notification uh, priorities and uh, other things we will talk about in the upcoming slide. So now let's talk about passive life. Hopefully it's a little more interesting than a bug's life. Uh, on a typical usage, it consists of five steps. The first is initialization. This is done on a per VM basis. But on a per passive base, it really has just four steps. Allocation the passive, bind with a page table, gas page table, and unbind and a free. The DMA can start after step three. So now let's walk through this example. We use uh, Intel VTD scalable mode as an example. Here, it's so started with the VM issues allocation of the passive. Once the pass is allocated, it can be passed down to the VFI or to VFI interface through the bind on bind IOPTOS. This gets propagated to the IOMMU driver that performs the bind. They basically set up the passive uh, in the passive table and also the nested translation is enabled. Once the passive is bound to a guest page table, IOMMU driver and can emit, can notify the rest of the users of the status change. So the passive is ready to go for all the users such as KVM, 
Um, so CPU can issue into command or device driver can do can start doing DMA on that passive. So the notification can reach the other users, such as KVM and device drivers. Of course, during the initialization time, KVM and device drivers must register notification. Those are, are on a per VM or process MM basis. We have a mechanism to identify uh, the common token between uh, users of the same process. So the teardown is just a reverse process, initiated from the VM to do unbind, and passed on to IBMU driver perform the unbind, and then notify the KVM or device driver. For example, when KVM gets notified, it will clear its passive table entry uh, for that particular passive. And we also implement the wrap counting mechanism to, to make sure the passive life cycles are clearly aligned, meaning not until the last user drops its reference of the passive, the passive will not be returned to the pool for reallocation. So now the status update. So our team has been working on scalable IOV enabling shared virtual memory for the past two, three years. So we have made a lot of progress in our MMU driver, VTD driver, and the user APIs. So here we listed a couple of related patches related to passive IOACID core enhancements and the VFIO interfaces. We also, have, we also have some opens we want to discuss in this forum. The first one is, should the IOAC allocation exclusively be done through VFIO as we have today, or we can have a standalone user API? There has many implications for complexity and uh, lifecycle management. Also, how can we use how can a user manage IOAC quota from uh, user, from a system admin perspective? So we have done some research on using R limit or C group, but those seems to be too heavy handed for a simple passive allocation quota management. So finally, let's summarize what we covered today. So we talk about DMA request with passive. With remapping, this is done at the request ID and the passive granularity. Passive in Linux is managed by IOACID core. We don't support multiple namespace for passive on the, on the host. The CASS also has its own passive namespace. Passive could have multiple users, each with hardware context association. So we must you know, synchronize them during set up and tear down. So we use notification and ref counting to manage the life cycles. I want to thank you for your attention and the EI are ready for questions and more discussions on the two opens we have. Thank you so much.